Well, what we do is we, we want to build a legal foundation. We want to, re if necessary, redo the planning. If we're married, we say, you know, I still love you, honey, but we need to have a plan B in place as well. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that, what the plan B looks like. And we call this building the legal foundation. And these are the foundational documents. Two different types of powers of attorney and then either a will or a trust. And we might have both a will and a trust. I'll talk a little bit about that. So first of all, to make sure that we're all on the same page, what is a power of attorney? Well, um, using John and Agnes as an example, John, we're going to assume John's back with us now, so John's still alive. He appoints Agnes as his power of attorney or his agent. And for finances, what that means for finances is John says, if I'm not able to, John can write checks, or excuse me, Agnes can write checks, pay bills for me, etc., etc do all those financial transactions that I could do myself if I was able to do so. But they, you know, they drive around, they travel together, so what happens, God forbid, they were in a car accident and they were both incapacitated temporarily or could even be permanent. So what we're going to do then is with the, with the powers of attorney, we're going to have a substitute or a backup agent. And they, for their financial powers of attorney, they chose Justin, their oldest son, as a backup agent in case the other spouse wasn't able to do it. And the financial power of attorney in Virginia is a very important document because in Virginia it says the agent under Virginia law can only do what the principal that's to say John, the person who created the power, the agent can only do what he or she could have done if acting personally, what they did do, I should say. So if all John gave, or if all John did in terms of gifting was he gave $10 to the church every Sunday, that's all Agnes would be able to do uh, as his agent unless the power of attorney said differently. So we're going to put full gifting language in there for Agnes if John's incapacitated that Agnes can gift away. They may need to transfer assets between, from one to the other. They may need to transfer assets to a child for Medicaid planning purposes. Real estate. What about, you know, they live in a big house, it's two stories, they want to downsize, they want to buy a smaller home but John is not physically able to sign the deed. Well, the power of attorney says Agnes can do that for him if that's needed, or Justin if, if Agnes is not available for any reason. Same with taxes, social security. The IRS won't talk to you unless you have that power of attorney signed in writing. So that's the financial power, very important. Equally important, of course, is the healthcare power. And there's two parts to the healthcare, the who and the what. So who do I want to make medical decisions for me and what do I want that decision to be? So again, Agnes appoints John, John appoints Agnes, they're each other's healthcare agents. And same thing, always name, always a good idea to name a backup. So Katie, their daughter, she's a backup agent if the other spouse is not available for some reason. She's a nurse, and so they decide to name her as the, as the backup healthcare agent. And then what decisions do I want my healthcare agent to make? Well, part of that is a living will. What if I'm on a life support machine, uh, I'm in a permanent vegetative state, the doctors say no chance of coming back. Well, many, many 
a lot of people in that situation would say, you know, I don't want to be kept alive artificially by machines after a certain period of time. Let me know if, let me go if I, you know, can't have a meaningful lifestyle. Well, that's the living will. Personal care plan, what do I like to do, to eat, to read, all those kinds of things. What do I like if I'm not able to speak for myself? That's already there, everything's in writing. And lastly, on the healthcare side is a HIPAA. What's HIPAA? Um, these are the health, the health laws, the healthcare privacy laws. So if I want a spouse or my kids to have access to my healthcare records, I do what's called a HIPAA release, so I release the healthcare records to them, to a spouse, to children, brother, sister, whoever I want to have the records.